Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Zoo Box. I'm Sean, and today we're going to be talking about the recently released, just last weekend, actually, The Batman. What's black and blue? The film is directed by Matt Reeves. It's written by Matt Reeves, Peter Craig, and Bill Finger. Well, he's credited as a creator. Bill Finger's been dead. He's been dead for a minute. Guy's six feet under. He's deader than dead. He's deader than Bruce Wayne's parents. Take it easy, sweetheart. It stars Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Colin Farrell, Jeffrey Wright, Paul Dano, John Turturro, Peter Sarsgaard, Andy Serkis, and others. The logline plot synopsis is when the Riddler, a sadistic serial killer, begins murdering key political figures in Gotham, Batman is forced to investigate the city's hidden corruption and question his family's involvement. I'm vengeance. So um, I'm a big Batman fan. If you haven't already, there's a video on the channel where I ranked all of my, uh, all the theatrically released Batman movies. I ranked them from worst to best leading up to the Batman. And maybe we'll talk about where this could possibly land in that ranking towards the end of the video. Uh, this is going to be mostly spoiler free. If I, if I end up going into spoilers, I will try to give a warning uh, before I do. Uh, but this can be mostly spoiler free. Just kind of a brief overview, my brief general thoughts. I've only had a chance to see it one time, um, so I'm sure I'll, I'll develop further in the future. I'm sure my thoughts on this will definitely mature. Um, so just right off the bat, I thought it was okay. I thought it was an okay movie. Um, I think it's a little, it's a little, it's it's a little too much of the modern time and the way that we make kind of these big franchise superhero movies now it felt very like episodic it felt like a, a pilot like an extended pilot for a tv show and they're setting up all the places like they can't make movies in these franchises anymore that it's just like a singular movie like a satisfying singular experience where this is very much like a chapter one and me as a fan of cinema as a fan of going to the movies i like a story i want to be told the story in here i'm not even completely sure what bruce's arc really is you don't get a lot of a sense of who he is as a person other than that he's like depressed and that he's out for vengeance and he's trying to figure out the best way to adjudicate that as a vigilante um we don't get to see any of the development of him like kind of meeting commissioner gordon they've cut all that stuff out this is basically batman year two so a lot of the classic relationships that we're familiar with from the comic book are already kind of established. So, and I didn't really mind that so much just because, you know, we've seen them a million times being so familiar with Batman, just as a character and the lore of Batman. Like I was very familiar with it. So that didn't really bother me too much. Uh, the only thing that I guess maybe bothered me is because of how some of the other characters react to Batman, especially when it comes to like his relationship with commissioner Gordon, where it's like, Commissioner Gordon's all cool with him. He trusts him. These built a bat signal. They have all this stuff, but none of the other cops have any sense that they appreciate Batman's presence at all. So I thought that was a little weird. Like if you're beaming a light in the sky of a big bat symbol and most, the vast majority of the police force, both the leadership and just the guys on the street don't really trust or like Batman. Don't you think they probably would have figured it out where <laughs> the fucking light is coming from and where they go to meet up? But I digress. That's just, I mean, that's a nitpick. That's, you know, admittedly, that's a nitpick. But still, like, you watch it and you're just like, eh? Eh? I didn't, that stuff like that didn't really bother me. Uh, let's, I want to talk about the things I really liked about the movie. I really liked the aesthetic of the movie. I liked the tone of the movie. I liked its vibe. Even when I think, like, some of it doesn't always gel together 100%. There was kind of a practical reality to the Gotham that they built here that I really liked. Uh, it feels like a timeless Gotham. It's kind of outside of space and time a little bit. It really felt like a comic book Gotham, and uh, I really, really enjoyed that. I also really enjoyed um, Robert Pattinson as Batman in the suit. He spends a lot of time in the suit as Batman. Uh, actually, I would say probably like 80% of his screen time. He's in the bat suit, and it really is a Batman story, a proper Batman story. It does feel like something that is cold from the comic books, where this would 
if this had been tailored more to just be one singular story and not a setup for fucking HBO Max series and more Batman movies, like it feels like it could have been like a one shot comic um, or a limited series, like a three part series or something. If you were to read the books, because it's just Batman trying to solve a mystery and, you know, using his kind of his detective skills, some of the procedural stuff, because it's very procedurally orientated is a little, is a little loosey goosey. Uh, Batman doesn't ever really get to use his intellect so much as that he's he goes out. They have like the structure of the movie is like he meets up with Commissioner Gordon. He goes out and finds a clue. He brings the clue back to Commissioner Gordon, asks him what he thinks it means, and then rinse and repeat like for basically ninety minutes. Um, the ninety like ninety minutes of this almost three hour movie is that is that, and that's not like a bad thing necessarily but it has to be kind because of, it's a mainstream movie so it kind of has to be stupid has to be kind of dumb uh even the riddler's riddles are not all that like interesting um and then the giving the riddler kind of this deeper a motivation that i found a little odd and a little too like a little too modern storytelling like everybody's connected everybody knows each other everybody everybody's lives are intersecting um, there's an interesting stuff with the Riddler. Paul Dano does a pretty good job. He's there chewing the fuck out of scenery. He's doing his version of like a Batman villain and in the same way that Heath Ledger or Tom Hardy. Actually, he reminded me a lot of Tom Hardy's Bane, to be honest with you. What do you know about Comet Pizza, Batman? The people have to know. Share, like, subscribe. Oh, thank you for your generous dono, Fat Fetch Biatch XXXXX84. Um, in the same ways that they kind of embrace that, like kind of being that larger than life, the theatricality of it, because you kind of have to, like, if you're playing a villain opposite Batman, you gotta, gotta be crazy. Cause Batman himself is already crazy. It almost like normalizes Batman by having villains that are so intense. And I like that some of the subtext of the movie addresses some of the things that, um, that are interesting about the, the, the Batman character, the, like the paradox of Batman, one of the things is being like if Batman exists, uh, he creates these villains in a certain respect because the villains feel like they have to rise to the occasion because of Batman. And in this movie, there's like a misplaced sense of uh, fanboyism. It definitely kind of goes like it's calling very much from kind of like toxic online culture and uh, conspiracy theory communities and subcultures that people just don't find palatable. Um, it's definitely it's definitely making a commentary on that a little bit, like the Riddler live streams. And somebody at one point makes like the comment. He's like, oh, he's got like 500 followers, which, you know, and I heard people dogging on that. Be like, well, that's not, not a lot of followers. So it's like, well, no, it's not a lot of followers. But if you have 500 diehard people that are watching your your serial killer streams and uh, and, and it's ideologically driven, you have to imagine at least 10, 20 Thirty percent of those people may be people that would take action, and uh, I think that was kind of the point they were making. Once it starts getting into the third act, like once you kind of establish all the characters, you establish the mystery, it starts to kind of fall apart. It starts buckling under its own weight. It's so unwieldy. Um, it's never boring though, even though it's kind of thematically it feels incoherent, and there is like this whole vein of subtext it's basically the one it doesn't like batman it doesn't like the notion of what batman means you know batman fundamentally in some ways is a little bit of a right wing you could even suggest authoritarian fascistic type of character just by the nature of him being a vigilante and a vigilante that is capable of his vigilanteism because he's a billionaire uh and the movie is kind of uncomfortable with that and they kind of want they constantly have to kind of they constantly kind of have to like hedge their bets a little bit about how they treat Batman. And if Batman is sufficiently solemn enough because of, he was born into wealth, he inherited wealth. And it's, that's in the subtext. Like it's not like, it doesn't beat you over the head with it. Really? I mean, I thought it kind of did in some ways, but like I was talking to my wife and I, I was talking to, and I was watching some other uh, reviews and it seems like it's largely went over people's heads. Like it just, it wasn't apparent to most people. So maybe I'm just a little too online. Like, so I just, it just stuck out more to me uh, because it does, it definitely has kind of overtures of like, oh, like the old corrupt, old white, old white dead men, you know, that, that whole meme and, uh, and the new generation 
are people like uh, like Bruce Wayne is somebody that's going to like give up his fortune, and Selena Kyle is like the uh, this this somewhat Antifa like underdog, and uh, and like the new mayor is like this hip young progressive mayor that wants to talk about uh, Bruce Wayne, you know, give doing more charitable work, giving more to these funds and stuff because even though it was corrupted in the past, even though the the mob and the and the and Wayne Senior, even though they couldn't do it correctly, she'll be able to do it correctly. You just give her the money, and because she's so hip and young and cool, well, she's gonna figure it out. Her last name I think is like Real, like Real. It's so, it's very on the nose. Some of that stuff is very on the nose. Um, other things I liked about the movie, I thought Colin Farrell was a lot of fun, if somewhat unnecess- unnecessary. Um, I like. I'm curious to see what he does with the f- the character in the future. They are doing a Penguin like limited series for HBO Max. I am actually kind of curious about that. I'm curious where he'll take the character and where he'll take that performance because you don't get a lot of it. He's not in a ton of the movie, but he's speckled out throughout the movie enough where you feel like he's a a bigger player. He's like a you know he's like a he's a little bit more than a cameo. He is kind of just like a, a minor player, but bigger than a cameo. And he has a, he's obviously having fun and he's kind of chewing the scenery and he's being a little over the top. And sometimes I think it works better than other times. Um, I'm like I said, I'm curious where that will go. It's hard to get a good sense or a good read on him because he wasn't really the main villain. He's kind of like the it's like the penguin rises. The penguin begins. There's a little aspect of that. And then the way where they leave the character, as if once you see the movie, you'll see how it kind of leads into a potential series or show. That's probably going to be like very orientated around Penguin becoming a big deal in the underworld. Um, yeah, and I, I think the cinematography was great. Another thing I really loved was the physicality of Batman. Like he is, he's fucking brutal. Uh, he hits, you feel the hits. Uh, he's a little, he's rough and he's tough. And I, I really like that. I really like some of the, the action sequences. There's you know, just a few times that he goes into like the, like the nightclub where he just fights a bunch of dudes. It just looks cool. I don't even know how to like really say anything other than that. It just looks fucking rad. Um, <laughs> he's just beating the shit out of people with kind of wild abandon. He hasn't. He doesn't know how to kind of reserve himself just yet. And uh, and I had a lot of fun with it. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that aspect of it. So it's kind of weird. It's like I really like some of it because it's that it's pulling from the comic books that I enjoy a lot. Like it feels like it pulls a lot from like Jeff Loeb's and Tim Sales, the long Halloween and Frank Miller is kind of year one ish stuff. Um, it it's definitely feels like it's pulling from that. And it's kind of um, it acknowledges the, the, the weird uh, psychopathy of somebody like Bruce Wayne to want to do this stuff, but it doesn't ever really delve into it. It kind of just assumes that you know that it's weird. Um, you don't get a lot of from Bruce Wayne and they'd said that they had done that on purpose because they wanted to suggest that like Bruce Wayne is so into this at this point in his life that he is not Bruce Wayne. He's become a complete recluse. He doesn't go out. He's not pretending to be a playboy. He's not trying to keep up appearances or run Wayne enterprises in the same way that like Christopher Nolan went with it. Um, he's, he's a complete like nutcase. He's a recluse and all he does is hang out. And uh, where's his bat suit? And just he all he does is focus on being Batman. That's it. Yeah, and there's um and Zoe Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz is okay. She's okay. Like she's okay in a vacuum. I don't think her or Robert Pattinson had very much chemistry with each other. Um, they felt really flat to me. Like that whole romance and so much of what would help you buy into like their affinity for each other would be chemistry. And because it does not come across in the script very well, and it's not developed very well. And that's another thing. I don't think a lot of what happens is very well developed. And I think some of it comes out of way, comes out of way out of left field towards the end, especially once you get to the third act, which I think, you know, mechanically in terms of like just the action and stuff is very exciting. It's very cool. You get to see Batman kick some more ass and do some more cool stuff. But I don't think it, um, if you think of it as part of the whole piece that it actually works very well. Um, but yeah, but there was but there's something about it that I like this tone, I like the style, I like the the adherence to the kind of practical effects. Like there's a car chase scene that they show a little bit in the trailer, and it's fucking awesome. And it's an extended sequence, it's like five or six minutes long, and it feels uh really grounded and really badass. It feels like something out of um 
reminded me of like something that would be in like the seventies or eighties, like that kind of style of car chase where, and it's even though in like, you know, the new Batman or Batmobile they have is like a, it's an old muscle car. So it even kind of adds more to that feeling of that era. And I think they did a pretty good job with that stuff. I would say overall, I enjoyed it. I was never bored, but I was very underwhelmed by it. I don't know why. I kind of had high expectations for it. I mean, Matt Reeves, I've liked his stuff well enough in the past. I'm not like a, a Matt Reeves diehard or anything like that, but I have liked some of his work. I do like the two Planet of the Apes movies he's made. Um, he did a version of Let the Right One In. He did the American version called Let Me In, which isn't better than the original, but it's on par with it. He actually did a pretty decent job. Um, and also, he got to start doing Cloverfield, though. Yeah, he comes from the J.J. Abrams. He comes from the bad robot factory. And But there's something missing here. There is something missing. There's some missing element um, that makes this feel a little little incoherent at times. Even though it's three hours long, you still feel like you're missing material. You're missing things because of the things that they decided to leave in. I do think it's too long. I think almost three hours is completely unnecessary because the first hour and a half, so much of it is redundant. Um and, and I got to say, like some of the ways that they go about investigating these crimes and trying to figure stuff out is really dumb. It's, it's dumb even for this kind of movie. And I'm surprised more people haven't called that out. I think people are just so wrapped up in the vibe of the movie, which is awesome. It's fucking rad uh, that there is kind of makes all the story points kind of wash over you a little bit. But I don't know. I was just I don't know. I, I like I said, I think I overall I think I liked it. I didn't love it and I'm still, and I'm disappointed at the same time. I have all these conflicting feelings about it because the things I liked about it, I really liked about it. And the things that I, I didn't like, I really didn't like, although I don't think I've ever, I, there's anything I cross over into like hating it really. There's so much about the movie that just feels undercooked and mediocre. Um, from a writing standpoint, more than anything, like I said, I love the vibe. I love the visual aesthetic. I love the tone. I love the uh, the cinematography is great. The score is awesome. I love the score of the movie. Um, I'm looking forward to go checking out again, though. I want to see it again to see if if my opinion changes. I feel like my opinion could get worse. Actually, I feel like I could turn on the Batman pretty hard if I watch it and pay like too much attention to it. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe next time. Maybe if uh, the rest of the guys end up seeing it, we can do like a big. Uh, group discussion about it. That might be fun. If uh, if Prophet and Big Paul end up getting to see it, it would be. It's a movie that I would like to talk to other people about and really kind of suss out because I do have so many conflicted feelings about it. And sometimes the best way to work those out is to talk to somebody about them. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's just kind of my well, not my super brief, but <laughs> brief for me thoughts on the Batman. Uh, let me know what you think. If you saw it yourself, did you see it? What do you think of it? Um, where do you think it ranks? I would say this would be like my new number six or seven, maybe. That's probably where this would land. I don't think it makes the top five, honestly. Although I got to see it again. I got to see it again because I got to really dive into the subtext to see how clunky or how clever it is. Because uh, it's just so it throws so much at you. It throws so much at you in that three hour time period. And, um, yeah, yeah. It does feel like a TV show though. It feels like a pilot for a television show. And that just on some very basic level, it irritates me. Uh, cause I like movies. I don't give a shit about your TV shows. Stop trying to sell me shit, please. Just like make a fucking movie. Just make a movie that I can watch as a beginning, a middle and end. And you can leave things open at the end, of course, but just, like, give me something coherent. Some, like, an arc that I can track. Some sort of journey that he goes on, please, for the love of fucking God. Stop doing all this shit where it's like, part one, come see part two in two years. Like, fuck you. Just make a fucking movie. Tell me a story. Please. 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 Anyways. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to know more about Zoobox, there's a bunch of links in the description. We got TikToks. We got Facebook. We got Instagram. We got Reddit. Also, if you'd like to donate, we are trying to raise money to get better equipment. There's a paypal.me 
um, in the description as well. But the thing you can do the most that really helps the most is to give us a like and share the video if you feel so inclined. That's honestly, that's the best thing you could do. While, you know, a little cash could help so we get better microphones and cameras, um, really just sharing it around and spreading the, the message of Zoobox to as far as you can is the best thing you can do to help us. All right. Thank you, and we'll see you later. Bye.